I think Popon Koopa is a better pick compared to Clint no. because it can just cover for the heave. Yeah, there you go. What but will? Other than Popo. Hmm. I don't know. I I'm feeling like I want to see some crazy things. I want to see maybe the one one here come yes. out or something oh. like the Aldous. You know, you okay. already have two very, very good range heroes. You have the Matilda and the Uranus, but you need someone else to tank all that damage. Meanwhile, also dealing some damage. No. So I think Aldous works perfectly. Can dive onto the far side as well. Basically, nullify that feather airstrike instantly with the chase fate. Yeah, I, I, I don't like Aura's draft. Okay. I think they lack the damage. They might lack that damage. Yeah. Okay, they have Farsa. Okay, you, they even have that link. But again, with yeah. two fighters... They're going against Uranus. Exactly, with two fighters left and right, what will they offer in the late game? And I feel like Bigatron, with that last pick, uh, exploits that fact. They just picked an, a late game hero in Aldous. And I feel like they have more balance, well-rounded. They have CP, they have Burst, they have Siege potential. And of course, with that Aldous, they might take that late game. Yeah, I need to agree with you as well. Um, I feel like Bigatron Alpha has the more solid draft, more multidimensional, they have more win conditions, and I think they have the easier ways to victory. But it's all going to come down to execution here in game number two. Will we see a clean sweep from the side of the Red Robots, or will Aura Fire force a third game in the series? Let's just see right here and right now. I want to see everyone spam in the chat. Hashtag Aura Fire or hashtag B. T R win. Okay, and we can already see from the drafting, I feel like Aura Fire can actually take it in the early stages of the game. They do have the Ling, they do have the Florin as well as the Farsa, and they can easily rotate around the map and actually build the tempo and the momentum for themselves. But the question is whether or not they can actually withstand the mid to or mid to late pressure that the Bigatron Alpha team and composition can actually bring them, especially with Rainbow as and as well as with Key. Yeah, what you're looking at right now, I feel is like Aura Fire, they want to play with that early game. They want to get pressure as, as soon as possible and use the link to snowball with the Yuzong as well, which is going to be played by Kabuki, by the way. So we're correct. We were correct on that one. Max still just able to free farm really, really well. Or already, I think, getting a little bit more than high in terms of the early game because that is already a 386, 400 gold lead now for the side of Bigatron Alpha, just purely based on farm alone. I mean, Max has always been such a, an efficient, efficient jungler. Yeah. Like, he loves to... He's actually able to withstand all the early game pressure if they're not leaning into the latest stage of the game and still come out with the highest GPM. So that's actually something that we've seen a lot from him. But now it seems like Aura Fire, they are looking for a trade on the map. Yeah, hi, jumping in onto three members. It's gonna be Kabuki jumping with the Petrify, able to connect onto Rainbow right now with the Furious Dive, but it's gonna be the Flicker popped and swell instantly by Rainbow. High goes in for the Tempest of Blades and gets the first blood presented to you by the Samsung Galaxy A series. Aura Fire draws first blood, but instantly you can see Max already on to the turtle. Let's see if he's able to death this. It is gonna be Fluffy jumping with the point. Star Moon, will he be able to get it? The turtle will be stolen, but High jumps in onto Max now with the help of Repo. Will they be able to get away? Feather S right coming in, but the Guiding Wind gets him out. And and that is a one-for-one one still in favor of Big Etron Alpha. Okay, when you were talking about macro plays from the side of Big Etron Alpha, I finally understand what you mean. That was actually really cool. Yeah. Or a fire rotated towards the top and they understood that. They didn't want to contest, lost someone, but they were able to get another objective on the board in that turtle. So this is actually a really good setup from the side of Big Etron Alpha. And if they can keep this up and take it into later stages of the game, I feel like Bigatron Alpha can actually close this really easily. Yeah, I feel like Bigatron Alpha from the first few minutes they set it up well, and a bigger uh, an hour of fire. They they might just be more proactive here on high, but is it convincing enough? Take a look at the composition. They have Ling. They have as well as Youth Song. But in the early game, they could not find their footing. And I I feel like Bigatron Alpha they can just you know go ham here towards the mid game, uh, mid game especially when they have their power spikes, they could just uh, take the dub, honestly. Yeah, it's all gonna come down to who gets their power spike first. It should be Aura Fire, and that's when Bigatron Alpha should just look for trades. But they've already rotated to the top side high, looking for something. He dashes in with the Defiant Sword onto Key over the wall, and that's gonna make him punished a little bit, get him punished a little bit. He has to recall now. Kabuki going for the kills, going for the kills onto the minions, my bad into that top side. Yeah, I think Aura Fire, they really need to look for something right now because if they let Bigatron Alpha scale as well as the Aldos scale even harder into the late game, it's going to be very difficult for them to actually bring it back 
and win the game. And that's exactly, it seems like, what they're doing. They are trying to put pressure onto Repo, but will it be successful? I think it won't be successful here. Consecration gonna be popped. Feather is right gonna be dodged away right now, but it's gonna be it finally connecting onto him, and that's the kill picked up right before the turtle spawns. A miscalculation for the side of Bigatron Alpha, and now it might be Aurafire taking it uncontested. They're still trying to bait it away, trying to get it corrected, reset it here, but with two ultimates burnt away from the side of Aura, they might still want to go for this. Taste Fate has been popped, going in onto Hyde right now. Let's see, Max going in for the red Attribution, does he get it? He gets it! And it's gonna be Max jumping in! He picks up the kill onto Godiva, gets the stun onto Facehugger. Max looking for the kill, he's jumping in onto Facehugger, dodges away from the skill shots. And that is an amazing, amazing display of coordination from the side of BTR. Really well played by Bigatron Alpha, being able to actually steal that turtle. I think this is something that I mentioned earlier on last week. I had an issue with Bigatron Alpha because of their, you know, Retribution. their retributions weren't on point. <laughs> but I think that's been completely repaired. Oh. And now they're actually stealing it away from others. So really, you can actually see the development in that uh, type of, in that aspect as well from the side of Bigatron Alpha. And it shows with the gold lead as well. I also want to point out here, again, apart from that retribution, Max with that emblem. Take a look, it is a jungle Ooh. emblem, so already a shakeup. So no That's killing why. spree. No killing spree. So I feel like he wants the jungle. He wants to jungle more. And we will see, we'll, we will see, we will witness, is it effective or not? It's called the Demon Slayer meta in the Philippines. And finally, we're seeing it here in, used by Max. So. That's why he was able to take the buffs really, really fast, fast yeah. in the early he stages of the game. Yeah. He wants to get to level 15 as ASAP. Little Wanderer was him taking... Oh, wait a minute, Max, though. is going to be caught, but it's going to be Matt instantly now with a response. Temple oh. Bay is going to be able to take, take him down as Matt looks for a trade onto high. It's going to be Circling Eagle pop and used. Not going to be able to get out of that one. Feather Airstrike will be able to snipe him down as Aura Fire keeps and yells in the background, getting it back to their team. 600 gold in favor of Aura Fire. My god, the heat is real. If you guys can actually hear them on stage, they are screaming with fire from Aura Fire. Interestingly enough, but oh, seems like there might be a pickoff here. Yeah, Fluffy jumps in with a falling star moon. Matt's still able to clear the waves. Fluffy is going to get hit with one more turret shot, but it's still only a 600 gold lead for Aura Fire. They need to get way more than this. They need to use it to get more objectives on the board and snowball. Because if we're talking about late game, I think Big Chan Alpha might have this. Matt on the Aldus, they have the Yisun Shin and this. Literally, their whole composition is insane in the late game. None of them looking at it. Exactly. That's what I was mentioning. If they take it to the late game, Big Sean Alpha, I don't know if Aura Fire can actually stand a chance against how much pressure that Bigatron Alpha can actually do. Because not just the not is the damage just there, but they also have the really high and crazy insane sustainability in that Aldos, in Repo as well. As it, it looks like something might be oh, happening. Oh, another steal by Max. He goes in, but he's going to get taken down. He gets the retribution, but... Was it worth it? What do you think? I feel like it is not worth it, but but there you go, the compensation. Aldous picking up a tower bot side, so Bigatron, okay, Max wants to show off his retribution, <laughs> but then again, was it worth it at there now? Again, I think he was just showing it off. Uh, Chase made it open here, Mirko. Yeah, Chase Fate has been popped, but it instantly was cancelled here by Matt. Goes in again towards the bottom side, doesn't really want to go for anything too aggressive. No jungler just yet. Finally respawns, and he's heading all to the bottom side. Interestingly enough, Bigatron Alpha with their gold lead, it's actually been equalized back to the side of Aura Fire. So Aura Fire, if they go down, they don't want to go down without a fight. And now it seems like... Aura Fire, they are looking for something on the map. They need to look for some sort of trade, especially since they lost so many objectives on the board as we're going to take a look at the items. So both teams already have some anti-region, of course, for that uh, as Fluffy, Kabuki, Repo, they built that the Dominance Ice as well as Fluffy. So I feel like they established that department, but take a look at Max, he is under, he is 1-2-0 here, gold-wise, and on, on his way already towards BOD, so I feel like he doesn't care even though he is under, he wants that to find kills. Yeah, completely agree with you, man. But right now, Hai is going to be using the Finch Poise to jump onto Matt. Four people towards the bottom side, not an objective yet taken away by Aura Fire, but they're still building onto this. They're still trying to look for these proactive movements on the map. Still a complete set of turrets for the side of BTR. Yeah, now you can see they are trying to mirror movements as well here. 
Bigatron, they're also looking for something. But what I'd like to say is, you know, Bigatron, they don't have to play this aggressively at all. They can just buy time, stay off the pressure. Because Chase in face. the end, whoa, what? Yeah, Matt jumps into the backside. He's going to be bursted down. Repo gets taken down. Hi, looking for the play. Step of the big going to be used, but it's going to be Matt popping in and getting the kills now with him taken down. It's a two for one. Key gets caught, and that's going to be the bitch boys to follow him under the turret. Fluffy kick picks up wow. the kill with the killing spree as well, and Aura starts taking it down, starts screaming, and that is the lead picked up once again by the Dragons. What happened there, Goni? Wow, it was a very, very <laughs> messy team fight, I could say. But Aura Fire comes on top because why? They they spent their resources with on the right timing. They timed the in and outs perfectly. And a bigger John Alpha just lost Rainbow too late, too early. And let's just take a look at the replay here. Rainbow popping up, but take a look at the back side here. Fluffy dealing damage, and I feel like that is the key here. The job desk was done. In the back side though, by doing what he can to, you know, delay the movements and it was just too much damage was on point there. Mm. Okay, interesting. So Renbo was actually getting pressured by Fluffy in the back, in the behind it all. So it was very difficult for him to do his impact <laughs> that he could in that TV team fight and therefore Orify was actually able to take it, and now with another objective in their hands, they're yeah. actually uh -oh. able to bring it back up. But whoa, wait a minute. Another mistake by Matt. He goes in for the chase bait, but only on to Fluffy. The Feather and Airstrike will be able to take him down, and another kill once more. A 3,000 gold lead that has been building, and finally, now, 10 minutes in, it's time to go and order grab food because this is the perfect time. Usually, 10 minutes is a 50 percent. It's 50 percent before the game ends, you know? it's We're halfway there, and it's time for you guys to get your meals at 50% off as well with the Red promo code. There you go, Mirko. There you go, wow. guys. There you go, folks. And for now, though, Mirko and Zola's at third now. Uh -huh. As it stands, sure, our fire has the lead, and they have a solid lead. Take a look at the objectives. They have taken down five turrets and built up a very, very, uh, I feel like a con uh, convincing economy. But Bigatron, remember, they might just want to take it to the late game. They yeah. might just want to delay uh, the victory they might just want to drag it out because why they have that alder so keep that in mind folks i feel like Vigatron might turn this table around if if aura fire could not end this game uh asap aura fire needs to just they need to keep on pressuring they need to basically steal away these jungle creeps from max don't let him get to those power spikes because look he's already building towards that dhs yeah dhs so i feel like ikabuki and fluffy here needs to be aware of that if once that the HS has been built, so I feel like they really need to be careful engaging a team fight. But other than that, take a look at Face Tiger though. Already building uh, that genius one expects a lot enormous of damage here from that Feather Strike. Aura Fire with all their comfort heroes, you can see the impact that they have. I mean, Face Hugger Force Hero 3 KDA. That's insane as of right now. So if Aura Fire can actually keep up the pressure that they do, that they are already holding right now, I think Bigatron Alpha might be able to lose this one, but still it has to be very careful as Bigatron Alpha is going just to keep on scaling. So even as they're walking into the bush, out of the bush, into each other's buffs, Bigatron Alpha, they're just, they, they won't stop scaling. Yeah, remember when, uh, when we said that Max actually gives us wise vibes? Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, the jungle emblem, that's wise. Oh yeah, that's there a wise thing to do. That is a wise thing to do. Yeah. There you go, Eterna. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And now it seems like Aura Fire, they are still trying to pressure Bigatron Alpha on all fronts. They are rotating and putting a lot of oh. emphasis on Matt. So already very interesting from the side of Aura Fire. They really want to take him down, prevent him from scaling. But the chase fate does get opened up here, Mirko. Yeah, he was pressured in. He, he thought something was going to happen. They might be collapsing onto him. So instantly he pops the chase fate, goes in, opening up the map a little bit and also rotating with a team that desperately needs help right now. 5,000 gold deficit for the red robots. Aura Fire are using this to create pressure on the map and instantly they're going towards the Lord. I feel like Bigatron Alpha won't be able to contest this at all. Repo trying to walk himself away, walk himself out of that place, but it's going to be high, picking up that Lord, enhanced by the way, and this is all for free. Fluffy being very, very effective here. Only one person against, what, three, four members on the side of Bigtron Alpha being able to pressure them out and zone them away. Meanwhile, Aura Fire being able to take that Lord for themselves. He is very effective. He is very effective, and I feel like... Oh, uh -oh. A bro fight brewing. Yeah. 
What the heck? Guiding Wind was popped by Key to get him out, but Kabuki almost just one shot at Max there in the 13 minutes of the game. I feel like if Max was taken down there, they might have looked for the end. Remember, this is an enhanced Lord. They can't make any of these little blunders that they usually do in this late stage of the game. Uh-oh, but it does seem like they want more here or a fire. They still want to get something and make something happen because if they fail to take this, it might be Victor and Alpha being able to stave off into the late game, but look at this. Yeah, perfect execution right here from the side of Aura Fire. Using the Feather Airstrike to zone away the members with high as well. Jumping in back and forth, using the mobility that this hero has to create space for the team. He actually goes in for the hits. Temp of the Blade is going to be used. Will he be able to go in for more? No, he just goes in for the base. Real world manipulation going to be able to lock face hugger down. Circle Eagle all the way to follow it up, but it's all alone. Key forced to use the flicker. Matt now jumping in with a chase fade, going for Aura Fire, but no one is going to be targeted here. Matt finally gets the pickoff, but in the bottom side as well. Kabuki will be able to dash in. Max still kiting away in the backside, but it's going to be Matt versus the world. Kabuki jumps into the Furious Dive. Will be able to pick up the kill onto him. Fluffy now in a 1v3 situation. Falling Star Moon onto two, but it's going to be Max picking it up and a two for two in the end. But still very much more worth it for the side of Aura Fire, who managed to get two base turrets on top of the kills. Again, Fluffy giving me everyone versus him vibes right now. He was able to do a lot, buy a lot of time for his team right there to give him the space for his team to be able to do the damage that they were intended to do. Yeah, I feel like it favors more towards Bigatron Alpha because it was 2 for 2 and they were the ones defending here, Mirko. So, two again, base turrets though. Two ba oh, that, that's true, that's true. Two base turrets were taken down, but I feel like Bigatron still with that philosophy in mind, they want to take it to the late game. We will see though, we will see here, Aura Fire, can they find that, you know, perfect execution to now, with two base turrets taken down, to end the game. As of right now, Bigatron Alpha, they are looking shaky, I could say, but they are still holding on. Yeah, Aura Fire have been in control for the ma majority of this game. Literally, they started off really, really well. Bigatron Alpha were able to equalize in the middle, but unfortunately, they lost their grasp and Aura Fire were able to just completely snowball from there. And right now, if we take a look at the items, 16 minutes in, what can you tell us, Gani? Rainbow here, building utility, of course, a glowing wand, and I feel like he is on his way towards an uh, ice queen wand, but it is so hard to find a good, it is so hard to, uh, for, that, for this Eve to stay relevant in this game. A lot and a lot of, you know, Dive potential coming from side of our fire, and I feel like this Eve is just so hard to find the impact. Yeah, high jumping in onto Repo. That's a lot of damage, actually. So much damage coming out. Remember, Repo can still regen very, very fast. But oh, high jumps in with Embers of Blades, going to be able to zone away the members. Boy, Star Moon connects on the Matt and Renbo. Kabuki with the follow up now with the Black Dragon form to the backside. Furious Dive going to be popped and the Flicker as well. But in the other side of the map, though, Repo and Matt wreaking havoc, jumping in onto Facehugger. He's still able to kite away, but in the end, he gets taken down. Matt is going to be traded back. Repo running for the hills now with Max and Key following it up. Will they be? able to look for more. Guiding Wind is ready and Repo will take it. A one for one for Aura and BTR. Face Hugger for Matt. Face Fate always gets popped off onto Face Hugger and what, I w what I'm wondering is why Face Hugger just won't build more defensively honestly because the problem is Face Hugger is a really good reliable source of damage especially looking at their composition and unfortunately the burst isn't there because most likely in these later stages of the team fights Face Hugger is just going to get picked off from the early stages of when the team fight starts to begin. So why not build something like the Winter Truncheon, for example, to be able to withstand that first initial hit from that chase phase? Yeah, but again, Repo here. I might have to cut you off for now because Repo is trying to open up the map with his Consecration still ready. Reset it, Lord, already. Hi, jumps in onto two members. No damage just as of yet. Tempest of Blaze not going to be popped. He backs off instead. Lord Evolved has finally shown up in the Land of Dawn. 18 minutes in. Bigatron Alpha might look to contest here. Matt is still in the bottom side. Has the Chase Fate ready? No, actually, he doesn't. So this is actually very dangerous for Bigatron Alpha. If Matt decides to go for the Split Push, this can be the 
disastrous. Aura Fire starting it up. Half HP on the Lord, but it's gonna be the real world inflation trying to lock them down. High jumping into the backside with the help of Kabuki going in as well. Fluffy trying to kite away, but it's going to be repo taken down before the fight even starts. Matt jumps in onto Godiva, not gonna be able to get anyone down. Tries to run away, goes in for more damage in the end onto High, but is gonna get taken down in the top side. Kabuki, he goes in for a 1v3 and he almost wins it. An immortality for Key will be popped and that's going to be him taken down. The last ditch effort to use the Circling Eagle will not be worth it as Big Atron Alpha have lost three members in the 18th minute. Wow, insane performance by Aura Fire right now. Really clean cut. They know exactly who to target in that team fight. Being able to take four, three members down from the side of Bigatron Alpha and Mirko, this might be it. This might be their final stand. Yeah, it's going to be it. The base is going to be targeted instantly. The members of Bigatron Alpha won't even matter. Aura Fire pushes it to game number three. Ooh, wow, Sheesh. I am, wow, a third game on our hands, guys. This is going to be great. I love it already, man, the rivalry starting to brew. Usually, it's always Bigatron, Alter Ego. This time, both of these teams who've progressed, Aura Fire, the ones who are usually quiet back in Season 7. Yeah. Now, since Season 8, since Piala President, they've gained that confidence, and now they're loud as, they're as, loud as ever, and it's going to be <laughs> a very fun final game this yeah season. i mean finally finally they have a voice in this league and there you go aura fire forcing game number three towards bigatron and i feel like in that game they executed very very well we expected a different 